Hey everyone, it's Michael Valtos here from orderflows.com and this is the orderflows market analysis for Tuesday, April 18, 2017. Before we get this started, a brief disclaimer. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's finish security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be considered, should be used for trading. Only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Again, you know, the reason why there are uh, disclaimers like this at the beginning of my presentations is because I don't want people coming in thinking, you know, that what I show them in the examples is 100% um, accurate. There are times that trades fail. Um, you know, I, I do try and show that when that happens. And, you know, trading is not easy. Trading involves work right don't don't think you're going to come to the markets and all of a sudden you know buy a forty thousand dollar watch next week um you know maybe if you start with a million dollars yeah next week you can buy a forty thousand dollar watch because that's all you got left but uh you know realistically you know the best traders you know they put in the effort you know they put in the work and it's not something that happens overnight for many people and you know if, if people are, are selling you some black box thing thinking that it's going to make uh, all tons of money you know overnight then uh, you know I got a bridge to sell you or some swampland in Florida now the tools that are used in this presentation are the order flows trader which is a volume footprint chart and you know I've, I've enhanced it a bit um, to take into account what I look at and what I use in the order flow again you know my charts make order flow trading a lot easier um, you know, it was designed for me specifically. Then people asked, you know, how can they get a copy? And, you know, I didn't set out to become a software vendor. You know, I, I, I don't like it per se. You know, I'd rather concentrate on, on the markets myself rather than, you know, answering support tickets and, and things like that. But, you know, that said, um, you know, there is value in using order flow. And, you know, part of me, you know, I, I take it upon myself to educate people on, on how to use order flow. You know, there's a lot of garbage information out there. And, you know, hopefully by watching my videos, you could pick up some of the uh, insights that I've acquired in, in my 20 years of, of trading. You know, when I say 20 years of trading, it's not 20 years of trading for myself, you know, in, in my uh, home office. You know, I, I was working at the biggest firms in the world. JP Morgan, I spent eight years there. Cargill, I spent four years there. Um, Commerce Bank, three years there. EDF man two years, you know, and before that I was on the CME floor. So this is solid, legitimate, you know, <laughs> um, I don't want to call it, not education, but, you know, work experience. And, you know, how many people out there that are, you know, teaching people how to trade, you know, have that experience? You know, not many. Um, you know, but again, you know, I, I feel like I, I have a, a duty to, you know, help people learn how to trade properly. Um, you, know, some, you know, some of my friends think I'm crazy for wanting to spend time with um you know beginning traders and you know I, you know because it's, it's frustrating honestly sometimes but you know at the end of the day you know I, I feel good that you know people are able to make this make the change you know um you know not everybody comes to the markets looking to make uh, you know a million dollars next week you know some people are, are just happy to make you know two hundred dollars a day in the markets and you know if i can help them then then great you know two hundred dollars a day is doesn't sound like much but you know over the course of a month you know, that, 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 that's a huge difference in a person's income and you know there's nothing nothing wrong with with starting small you know I mean it's it's a little bit I'll say less stress but um, you know anytime you got money on the on the line there is stress but you know you, you, you got to start small and again there's nothing wrong you know as I said for a lot of people $200 a day at the end of the month you know is their house payment their car payment you know kids tuition it, it's a decent uh, you know it's a decent way to earn uh you know a, a second income you know especially if you're retired or something i'm not saying all, all retirees got to do it but you know what for people that are looking at another way to supplement their income and have the time during the day to sit in front of a screen for a few hours um you know order flow you know trading the markets might be for you um you know i don't say might be but uh you know there's uh, I can't say, you know, everybody, it's for everybody, you know, because honestly, you know, trading is not for everybody. There's a small percentage of people out there that, you know, can make it work. And, you know, not everybody is, is going to be successful in trading. You know, I, I don't want to say that, you know, everybody's got a 100% success rate. But, you know, it's just like any other field. You know, we, we all take, uh, you know, when you're, when, you're, when you're a kid, you know, you, you take, you play soccer. You know, not everybody 
is going to become a, a professional soccer player. Yeah, some people will get good. Some people will get skills that, you know, will sit with them and they can play soccer, you know, on a decent level. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to teach you is how to trade on a decent level, how to survive in the markets and make money. You know, it, it's all about making money and being consistent. And I think order flow will help a lot of traders become consistent. So that said, let's uh, jump into some charts here. Um, the first one I'll, I'll talk about this morning. Well, sorry, this it's in the evening time, but um, you know what happened was uh, here. This first one is going to be in the bond market here. Just pull it in here so you can see it a bit easier. And well, it was a little bit early in this session. There was a couple interesting things here in the bonds this morning. So you know, just coming into the U.S. session, you know, the nice thing in the bonds. You had this divergence, you had a ratio, and again, you know, ratio and divergence, It's that's like a, a go-to trade for me. Um, you know, your, your ratio is here, it's in blue numbers. Again, you know, if you're not familiar with my order flow ratios, you know, a lot of people have been adapting these, and they don't explain it properly, but if you get my software, you know, I, I've got a, I've got some, I got a short PDF that explains, you know, how to use them. Um, you know, if it's a red bar, it's on top, if it's a green bar, it's underneath. And if it's a blue number, you know, you like it. If it's a black number, it's just average, you know, your, your average order flow in the market. You know, not every bar is going to be so revealing to you that, you know, the, the mysteries of the world are going to be solved in the bar. No, um, but there are times when, you know, something in the order flow stands out. And that's what you're going to look for in the, um, in the ratio. So here you have a divergence. You have a new high with a negative delta in our ratio. And we sold off quite nicely from the, uh, you know, 154.02 area. Down to 153.24. You know, this was just, you know, five, it was a little bit early though, 545 that it happened until about 630. But, uh, you know, if you're in front of your screens, you would have been rewarded. Now, another thing, um, you know, don't think, you know, just because you have a divergence, you know, where you have a new high and a negative delta that, you know, hey, it's a go, you know, it's, it's, um, red light, green light. No, you should take it, you know, with the order flow. You know, again, you don't have, here you had a blue number in the ratio. So it's a ratio I like. Here's, it's not it's black right here it's black here it's black and you'll notice each time these divergences fail and when you start getting you know groupings of failed divergences oftentimes it's a sign that um, you know the market could run higher and we do you know you get three failed divergences basically from 748 to 839 so less than an hour and then a little bit later the strength reappears the market makes new highs so you had a sign actually earlier that you know here at eight you know just for 840 that this market you know if we start making runs at the highs again watch out we could go higher and we do you know we've got some new highs again failed divergences again we keep running higher here um, get up here again you got another um, ratio with a divergence you know 28.41 you got a divergence you actually got the other um, indicator the uh, Delta scalper giving a sell as well. And again, you know, it's, it's a nice little sell. Again, you know, now in the bonds, you know, bonds is a great market for trading in and out, you know, hit and run, hit and run, you know, getting, you know, risking four ticks, three ticks to get, you know, six to eight ticks. Um, you could do that several times a day. And again, you get a nice signal here. And it comes right down to this area where you got another ratio and, you know, bullish ratio. You got three in a row, which is another type of setup. And, you know, we just go higher from there until uh, two o'clock, which is when the cash closed. So that was the bonds. Now, um, another mark I'll look at really quick is the uh, is the fives. You know, five years, you know, trade similar to the bonds. It's not exactly 100% uh, the same because, you know, obviously the bonds is more of a 20 year, even though it's a 30 year contract, it's more of a 20 year note that's based on. Um, but that said, the uh, five years, you know, did give some similar uh, things. Again, here you have a failed ratio with a divergence. So again, you know, not every time it works. Get up here, you got a, a ratio. Now it's 0.74, right? I, use, I used to use point, uh, 1.0, but I've, I've tightened it up to 0.7. You know, this is just on the cusp of it. There's a couple other things. You know, you got this buying imbalance here at the new high, and you, you get one tick follow through, and then it fails. Actually, you know, for me, this is quite telling. Um, you know, you got the aggressive buyers coming in here, couldn't take it any higher, took it one tick higher, then it failed. You got the selling imbalance here, here, here. I know it sort of lights out this high for the meantime, at least. And then you sell off, um, you know, a few ticks. And then again, you get back up to this high. And this time you do have the uh, ratio, 277, it's a blue number with the divergence. Yeah, you come off a little bit, and then it just starts coming back again. You know, again, this one, 
you know, you would have taken a, a small loss on that. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say, oh, yeah, you could have broken even. No, you know, I'd be looking to get short somewhere in here around uh, 23 and a quarter. And, you know, it makes the move down to 22 and a half before it starts turning back up. You know, that's the sign to get out before you get stopped out up here is, is this um, single print here, you know, with a bullish ratio. You know, you don't want to be looking, you don't want to be short and then all of a sudden start to see bullish signals, you know, on the way back up. Here you get another uh, divergence, but no ratio. You got the price rejector giving a sell there. Um, again, some more failed divergences, you know, happening pretty quick. One, two, three. Um, you know, that's that's a sign the market can go higher. You know, you got from 927 to 1011 within 30 minutes, uh, sorry, you know, about 40 minutes, three failed divergences. And, you know, when you have failed divergences grouped together, it's, it's often a sign of the market bumping higher, bumping higher, bumping higher, coming off a little bit, buying, coming back in making it go higher and then boom we just go higher 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 then uh you know that was about it i think in the in the fives this morning yeah then um it's the evening session already um you know lastly the, or not lastly just a couple more markets i'll talk about real quick um the e-minis uh really quick okay so this is the e-mini daily chart okay and you know what you got here the day before this is well, we're in the evening session right now, so you got that small candle. This is yesterday. This is the 18th, rather. Trade date the 18th. This is trade date the 17th. So this is Monday. Big engulfing pattern, right? Where all the candlestick guys, engulfing pattern, you know, sell, you know, mortgage the house, uh, get a, you know, loan on the car, just buy the shit out of this market, right? You got this, you know, you're coming down, you got a swing low, got a bullish engulfing pattern, get the long, get the hell long. Where, what happened? We didn't do shit, right? We just, we rallied a little bit, made a new high, sold off under pressure most of the day. So, you know, all the candlestick guys, and again, you know, it's not like a few people look at candlesticks, a, a fucking, a fuckload of people look at candlesticks. And, you know, that, that was quite obvious in the morning, you know, all, all, you know, basically since the close of Monday, that you're sitting on this big bullish engulfing pattern where, you know, what happened? It failed, right? I mean, I was, I, honestly, I, I, in the morning, I was, I was looking when we started rallying here. I thought, hey, maybe, you know, we're going to see some continuation. For me, the key would have been if, if we got up to 50, I think we could have pushed up another 5, 10 points, um, you know, to validate this um, bullish engulfing pattern. We didn't. We failed. Okay, so, you know, wh what to do? Um, you know, candlesticks are great when they work. When they don't work, um, you know, you don't you don't hear a, a peep out of the candlestick guys and just, uh, you know, go hide back in their caves. But, um, you know, I, I say that I, I used to, you know, I like candlesticks. Don't get me wrong. I like candlesticks. But, um, you know, when they fail, they fail. I mean, just like any other, just like any other indicator. So the next one that I'm going to look at here is, is the 10 range E-mini. And, you know, honestly, th this morning it was kind of uneventful, actually, in the E-minis. We had a very wide uh, value area, you know, coming into the morning. But a little bit later, uh, around 11, you had this interesting thing. Okay, you had three in a row, one, you know, three ratios in a row. You got the pullback, which I was looking for, you know, a pullback up to this point of control. Now, however, the only thing that throws the spanner in the works is one, I don't necessarily like to be getting short going into new lows, you know, even though I got, you know, a three in a row. You know, rather what I, me personally, you know, every trader is wired differently. I'm always looking for a reason to be buying it near a low if possible. And I get it. I got the ratio. I got the divergence right here. And, you know, this trumps this, All right? So even though you're looking at this three in a row sell down here, I got to buy I got a very strong buy and you, know, you got to make a decision. Do you, what are you going to do? You're going to stick with this. Yeah. You know, if you got short in here, you know, up here somewhere on this point of control, it just went sideways on you. So even if you got short, you know, you wouldn't have been damaged too much. You could have taken either small loss or broken even. I'm not saying, yeah, you would have sold it here because you'd be looking to sell around you know, between these two point of controls. Um, you know, so if you're getting short in here, you know, I'm not going to say you could have covered it down here and made a point. You know, that's bullshit. Most likely you would have broke even or taken a, a, a small loss. But this, to me, this is, you know, this is the thing. You got to buy it. And, you know, what happened over the, you know, it just went from, um, you know, 33 all the way up into, uh, you know, into the 40s. You know, that was the, the nice big trade. And lastly, what I'll talk about here is the uh, soybeans. Soybeans was interesting. I love beans. And, you know, it goes back to my days of, of trading at Cargill, traded commodities. 
And it was interesting, you know, 8.30 when the, uh, you know, 8.30 is like the official, you know, this is the official open day session open, even though it trades electronically and it closes and then it reopens at 8.30. Look at this, all selling. Look at all these deltas, 353, 500, 300, 200, 500. Look at this, the candles, all negative, all selling, all down. Get a bounce here, still still negative delta. Get another bounce here. That's a ratio, but no divergence. Again, negative delta. Then you get down to this bar. Your first bar with positive delta since 8.30. It's 9 o'clock. First uh, sign of buying off the lows right here. Okay. Um, you know, it is divergence. It's not a ratio. Then you get a bearish ratio here. You get the price, the delta scalper coming in right here. But look at this, right? So you got some buying came in, in here. 269. Okay, then 61. It's getting smaller. Then delta of 8 and 8. 8 and 8. 8 is nothing in a bar. You know, that's a difference of one trade. You know, I could have come in and bought 10 lots. Or sold 10 lots and it'd be looking at negative delta so I, I treat these numbers as kind of neutral um you know um it, it's just it's not strong and you know, i don't want to say it's not weak but you know it's just kind of neutral in here eight and eight it said it could easily be a negative delta with just one or two two more trades and then the selling comes in boom you got the delta scalper given a huge sell here i'll say a huge sell but it's given a sell you got a huge negative delta Again, strong negative delta, strong negative delta. And of course, we, what happens? You, you go into the new lows. Divergence here. Okay, what's well, short-lived? And then boom, right down here, low of the day. Strong negative delta, minus 700. It's, it's your, your most, it's your strongest negative delta of the day. Now, this is where it gets interesting. This is where looking at the order flow really helps you as a trader. What do you see in this bar? Okay, yeah, you see the strong negative delta. Candle's green, market turned up. Why? because you got a lot of support here 449 500 499 right here this is why you have the strong negative delta you know people are still selling you know these are i don't say the last sellers but you know these are all, all the retail guys that are coming in that missed this move lower thinking hey we're going lower going to hit limit down sell it sell it you know but there's there's a strong commercial buyer here i'll say commercial it could be institutional it could be whatever um, all i know is there's some strong support here 400 you know 1500 contracts right here and you know, that's why you have that negative delta because they're selling the shit into it um you know 719 negative delta and what happens the support holds start to rally positive delta positive delta come back down come back down to this level look at this level what is it right here you know just at this point of control i mean it's not exactly the point of control it's one tick below the point of control but more or less you know this point of control is holding you know here we get down again another another uh, you know one tick through it you know this bar here is is holding you have the point of control in this bar here at the low just right off the low at 940 we don't even get down there and we just pop back all the way up from you know 942 ish all the way up into you know all the way up to the close um you know there's the close up in here around uh, 946 and a half 947 and we're into the night session so you know <laughs> That that was it for the day on on you know these these markets and the uh, and on the order flow. I mean it's it said it, it's not rocket science. There is some science behind it. Um, you know the, the theory of supply and demand is what move markets. You know not mathematical equations. And you know if you're willing to take the time to you know learn more about order flow, you know it, it's going to help your trading. I've got a webinar tomorrow on the uh, 19th. If you haven't signed up for it, you know you could go the link I put in the description below. And, you know, it's, it's definitely worth learning more about order flow if you're not using order flow. So, you know, thanks for watching this and to learn more about the software using this presentation, how you can profit from order flow trading, visit my website, www.orderflows.com or, you know, visit my, um, watch my webinar tomorrow. At least, you know, if, if you can't attend the webinar, it's in the afternoon, it's like at 1.15 Chicago time, at least sign up for it. So when it's done you know you'll get a link for the replay if you don't you can always email me but at least then you can watch the replay and we'll be talking about how to use order flow with you know like bollinger bands how to use it with um or just how to how to find low risk trades basically you know, i'm going to talk about my my three tick uh stop trade you know where you could risk as little as uh, three ticks on a trade and you know yesterday well i said you know in the crude oil i'll just really quick i'll give you a, a, a a preview of tomorrow you know this this right here I'm going to talk about this in the webinar so you have this high here this is around nine o'clock yeah you know, I'm gonna show you how you could have gotten short around the 52 uh, 82 ish area 
and it made a move all the way down to you know 52 you know below 52.60 so those was 20 ticks right there you're risking just three ticks you know how you can sell this high with confidence so again you know if um, if you want to learn more about order flow, if you want to learn this specific trade setup, watch my uh, watch my webinar tomorrow. So thanks all, and, and I hope to see you on the webinar. Bye bye.